is so stupid it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Uh, welcome to the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Uh, we didn't do a podcast last week. We didn't do a podcast last week because it was Thanksgiving. Um, not to mention, do they know? They don't know, right? Oh, okay. I'll let. I'll let. I'll let. Oh, I, well, I, I don't well. know if you told anyone. I just know they weren't. All right. Andrew's pregnant. I'll let him. <laughs> he can, Andrew, Andrew's pregnant. He's expecting. Um, but he'll be back uh, next week. Next week, I believe. But yo, we had to take a break, man. It was Thanksgiving, and we're gonna take another break for New Year's probably. We'll probably give y'all a best of show like we do every year. But um, how are you? What's happening? We can just just jump right into it. We're gonna do all the usual segments. We're gonna do Ask an Idiot, a lot of Ask an Idiot, but we're gonna start off with uh, what we saw this week that was positively brilliant, and we're gonna see this week what we thought uh, made us say, "What a fucking idiot!" First and foremost, um, positively brilliant, Jingle Jangle on motherfucking Netflix. Let me tell you <laughs> something. <laughs> what is that? Jingle Jangle is a movie on Netflix. It's a Christmas movie. It's a holiday movie. It's a feel-good movie. Uh, my wife wanted us to watch it as a family on Thanksgiving night. So we sat down and we watched it on Thanksgiving. And I felt like I wanted to cry four times. Now, mind you, I was completely sober. And it's one of those movies where she was like, oh, you know, the kids are going to enjoy this, whatever, whatever. But you end up enjoying it more than the kids do. Just because it's a lot of deeper meanings. My, my oldest daughter understood it because a lot of these Christmas movies end up being about belief and faith most of the time. Because, you know, Christmas is about Jesus, you know, the reason for the season. So a lot of these movies are about faith and belief. And, you know, Jingle Jangle is one of those. And A Christmas Story starring Ralphie has always been one of my favorite holiday movies. Probably my number one. It's not even close. It is my number one. That is my number one favorite movie. He's in yeah. this one? No, I'm just oh. saying <laughs> what Ralphie, the, sp- the space that Ralphie holds in my heart, Journey from Jingle Jangle now holds in my heart. Like that movie is that good. I watched it six fucking times. And the second time I watched it, I was like, oh, I got to watch this while I'm drinking. And I got to watch this while I'm on an edible. Absolutely balling. And you have like, it, it, it takes you through a range of emotions. You know, you got tears of sadness at one moment and then you got tears of joy you know by the end of the movie and I'm I, it's a musical I'm not one I'm not one of those people that really likes musicals but it's not like a corny musical you know what I mean because it's Christmas it's the holidays like it's a really really good film man so Jingle Jangle on Netflix is Netflix is positively motherfucking brilliant and I too believe that the square root uh, of impossible is possible with me. See, you don't even know what that is because you ain't seen the movie. Okay, but trust me, when you see the movie, you'll understand. That will that will become your Hakuna Matata, kids. Trust me. All right? Um, What I saw this week that made me say, what a fucking idiot, Nate Robinson's team. Um, There's no reason Nate Robinson should have ever been in the ring with Jake Paul. Uh, I didn't even think that was a match that was really going to happen. I do remember vaguely you know, hearing somebody tell me that Nate Robinson and Jake uh, Jake Paul was going to fight on the undercard of the Mike Tyson Roy Jones fight, and I said to myself, "That's a bad idea." The reason it's a bad idea because any skilled fighter, anybody that does combat fighting for a living, will embarrass you. Okay, and people think just because you know how to street fight, you can get in that motherfucking ring and box with people. No, it's not the same. You saw that. Calling himself the new Floyd Mayweather. Well, he's doing that because he's trying to bait Floyd Mayweather into fighting him, which is actually smart because if Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather bites that bait, that's a big payday for Jake Paul. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like that'll be a huge payday for a Jake Paul, and he knows that. So I, he, I don't think, I don't think he thinks he can really beat Floyd Mayweather. He just thinks that if he baits Floyd Mayweather into fighting him, you know, he can get Floyd to come out. And and do a and he'll get a big payday. But Floyd would be stupid to do that. Like certain things, I get fighting Conor McGregor. You know, Conor McGregor was the guy in in the UFC at the time. But fighting Jake Paul, nah. You, you still have a great legacy, my brother. You don't got nothing to prove. Like that's like fighting the guy that runs up on you in the street and thinks they can beat you, Floyd Mayweather. Just like a regular guy runs up on you in the street and want to fight because you the champ, you the undefeated champ, and he think he can beat you. You wouldn't put your hands on him. Or let him challenge you to a fight. So don't do that with Jake Paul. Let them um, know who you want. 
him to fight. I want Jake Paul <laughs> to challenge Clarissa Shields. That's what I want Jake Paul to challenge. Clarissa Shields. I'm, I'm, let me pull up Clarissa Shields' uh, stats. Right? Clarissa Shields. And salute to Clarissa. That's the homie. Clarissa is... She's held three multiple world... She, ha, she has... She holds multiple world titles in three weight classes. And she reigns as the undisputed female middleweight champion. That's who Jake Paul should fight. Okay? It would be the it would be a great matchup because it's black versus white, because it's man versus woman. We have these conversations about equality and you know what women are capable of, what men are capable of. I think Clarissa Shields, as skilled as a boxer she is, this is how much I believe in the science of boxing. As skilled of a boxer as she is, I think she will beat Jake Paul in that ring. And the reason I think she'll beat Jake Paul is simply because she has more experience. I really do. I think buying, boxing is a science. And, you know, Nate Robinson did not know the science. You know, how they, they, back in the day, be like, yo, what's the science, God? Nate Robinson didn't know the science. The science is not leading with your fucking face. Did they right? have beef before? That's why they went in, went into it? I think it started with some Twitter, some Twitter talk, uh-huh. you know? And everybody's giving Nate Robinson credit and saying, yo, it takes a real, you know, it takes real heart to get in the ring. Yes, it does. But it takes real brains to not get in the ring. Somebody like Floyd Mayweather was super smart. You know why Floyd Mayweather was super, Floyd Mayweather was super smart? Because he picked his opponents. And he fought when he wanted to fight. Okay? And he fought who he wanted to fight. And he fought them how he wanted to fight them. Nate Robinson, training for that little bit of time, getting in the ring with somebody who's been training the past four years, somebody who I've watched on pay-per-view before, somebody who actually boxes, that was just a terrible idea. A terrible idea. He needs to fire every single person around him. I don't give a fuck. Certain things aren't worth the money, man. Because now you got to be a fucking meme for the rest of your goddamn life. How do you how do you ruin your basketball legacy and you ain't even had a goddamn basketball in your hand? How you how you ruin your basketball legacy in the boxing ring? Whenever people think Nate Robinson from now on, they're not think, thinking three time dunk champion. They're not thinking his ten year NBA career. They're thinking about that knockout that he suffered in the ring at. Uh, against Jake Paul. And I don't even blame Nate Robinson. I don't think it's Nate Robinson's fault. I mean, it is kind of his fault because he's a grown man. He makes his own decisions. But whoever he had around him advised him wrong. Or maybe he just wasn't listening. I don't motherfucking know. But either way, um, it wasn't a good look for him. Y'all all saw him get knocked out. And I want to see Jake Paul fight Clarissa Shields next. That's who you should call out. All right? Clarissa motherfucking Shields. Um. But, but what? What was what you thought was you know worth the money was watching Tyson and um, Roy Roy Jones. Well, I, I did that because I did, I watched it because of the years of entertainment that Mike Tyson and Roy Jones have provided me. You know, Roy Jones was the greatest fighter of the nineties, uh, hands down. There's, no, there's there's nobody that knows boxing that'll tell you different. I know Mike Tyson was exciting. Mike Tyson had the video games. Mike Tyson had the reputation, baddest man on the planet. Yes, he he was he was all of that. But when it comes to pure boxing, just who's who's a better skilled boxer? Who was the best boxer? The greatest boxer? Roy fucking Jones. Roy Jones. That's was the, what I thought when he was boxing. Did who do you think really should have won? Do you think it was Tyson? Who the fuck cares? That, it literally, like, it, it literally was just watching two old men in there tussling. <laughs> it was. A you good- ever seen? You ever seen two old men fight for real? Like no. at a at a at a at a cookout or something? No. When they really fight at the cookout, you know they're not really gonna hurt each other until one of them go grab a weapon. Now you gotta keep you gotta keep them from going to get the gun. I'll keep them from pulling out a knife or some shit like that. I'll keep them from cracking a bottle and then trying to cut the person with the bottle. Other than that, all they're gonna do is wrestle until they out of breath. That's it what I. That's the point where I thought Mike Tyson was starting to like see that or feel that demon or whatever he says he has. You know? I don't. I don't. I don't think so. I think that fight did exactly what it was supposed to do. I think that. Um, you know, you, you were watching two guys who they know how to put on a show and they know how not to hurt each other. And I think that they sold the fight well. I think Mike Tyson was 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 made to look aggressive, you know, um, leaning into the reputation that he he has. And he looked aggressive and he looked tough, I guess, for a 50 something year old man. Roy was claiming he was hurt and that's going to open the door for Mike Tyson's new Legends League. And people are going to 
continue to pay money to see Mike Tyson fight in the future. They did like 1.5 million pay-per-view buys wow. at $50 a pop. You do the fucking math. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 1.5 million pay-per-view buys at $50 a pop. Yes, they're going to keep selling us these ger- these geriatric motherfucking fights, okay? You're going to see Evander Holyfield in there. You're going to see, you might see Buster Douglas in there. You might see all, who knows? I don't even know. Is Buster Douglas still alive? I don't know. Lennox Lewis? I, I think he died. Buster Douglas died? I got to double check. But... See? That's how you know motherfuckers is old. When you have to check to see if they're still alive. And by the way, these guys ain't that old. I mean, they 50-something. Like, I don't know, Buster should be, Buster, if right. he's alive, he should have been in his 50s. He's what? He's still alive. Uh, 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 yeah, apologies. He's alive. <laughs> Turn them on, Chris. But that's how it is when you get older. When you get older and people ain't seen you a while, they got to ask, are you motherfucking dead? But I thought the, I thought it was brilliant. I thought that fight was positively brilliant, not because of the fight, but just because the way they sold it. 1.5 million pay-per-view buys, you know, the, uh, the 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 concerts in between, the the great undercard, which I knew was going to be the most entertaining part of the night between Jake Paul and Nate Robinson. I thought it was great. Um, what else did I see this week that made me say, "What a fucking idiot!" Oh, um, Democrats, and I want y'all to add this. I want y'all to add this because you know I always talk about Democrats, you know, being terrible at messaging, and I saw um Barack Obama. I think he was on. I think it's called Good Morning America, Snapchat or Snapchat America, some something like that. And he was having a conversation about defunding the police. If you watch the whole four minutes and 55 seconds, you know, there's no way that you couldn't understand what he was saying. He totally agrees with the why of what defunding the police is. The why of what defunding the police is, is you want to take you know, money from these inflated police budgets and reinvest it back into the community, reinvest it back into the school system, reinvest it into, you know, proper, you know, uh, mental health care, reinvest it into just health care, period, you know, create job training programs, just reinvest the money into the hood, to the people that actually need it, provide opportunities for these folks. And he agrees with all that. He agrees with reimagining, you know, how people police in America. He agrees with police reform, all of that stuff. He just simply said, from a politician's perspective, once you hear defund the police, motherfuckers ain't hearing shit else you got to say. It, it's interesting. We take for granted, if you want people to buy your sneakers, that you're going to market it to your audience. If a musician drops a record, they're, they're going to try to reach certain audiences speaking to folks where they are. It's no different in terms of ideas. If you believe, as as I do, that we should be able to reform the criminal justice system so that it's not biased and treats everybody fairly, I guess you can use a snappy slogan like defund the police, but you know you've lost a big audience the minute you say it, which makes it a lot less likely that you're actually going to get the changes you want done. But if you instead say, let's reform the police department so that everybody's being treated fairly— you know, divert young people from getting into crime. And if there's a homeless guy, can maybe we send a mental health worker there instead of an armed unit that could end up resulting in a tragedy? Suddenly, a whole bunch of folks who might not otherwise listen to you are listening to you. And the reason he's right is because Democrats are so bad at messaging that they let the conservatives, they let the Republicans co-op the defund the police slogan or whatever you want to call it, and turn it into something that it's not. So when people hear defund the police, they hear abolish the police, they hear get rid of the police, and not actually focusing on what the why is, which is taking money out of these inflated police budgets and reinvesting them that money back into communities that need it. There's no way anybody can flip that narrative if you just constantly talk about the why. And all I saw all day yesterday was motherfuckers arguing about the slogan. Police reform don't need a fucking slogan. It just needs to be explained. That's it. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with the fund the police. It's just that the Democrats are so bad at fucking messaging that, like I said, they let the Republicans co-opt it and change the motherfucking narrative. And there's one thing that Barack Obama said, two things that he said I thought was brilliant. Uh, one, he said that Democrats need to stop leaning on all the old establishment Democrats and start leaning into people like AOC. If you want to move people, they are moved by stories that connect with their own lives. They're not moved by ideology. Now, one thing I will say about the Democratic Party, 
promoting young people is really important. We stick so long with the same old folks and don't make room for new voices. You know, the Democratic National Convention, I thought was really successful considering the pandemic. But, you know, the fact that an AOC only got, what, three minutes or five minutes when, you know, she speaks to a broad section of young people who are interested in what she has to say, even if they don't agree with everything she says. New blood's always good. And he's absolutely right. And the reason he's absolutely right is because AOC knows how to message and communicate to those people that they possibly could lose, be losing. But it's this line right here. This line right here that Barack Obama said sums up so much shit in regards to everything that's going on in this world, especially on social media. Barack Obama said... The key is deciding, do you want to actually get something done or do you want to feel good among the people you already agree with? And if you want to get something done in a democracy in a country as big and diverse as ours, then you've got to be able to meet people where they are and play a, a game of addition and not subtraction. That's all social media is. It's, 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 it's groupthink. It's, it's, it's you get on there and it's constant reinforcement from people that already fucking agree with you. But that's echo chamber shit. Yeah. How are you bringing anybody in new? Chris, am I saying anything wrong? Stop me if I am. No, no, I, I agree with you. And I, I agree with him on that. I think the area where he's kind of playing both sides of the fence, though, is when he talks about we have to listen to new voices, which I agree with him. Like, I think AOC is the future of the Democratic Party. I think Katie Porter is the uh, future of the Democratic Party. But who's really responsible for Joe Biden being the, the candidate, the president-elect right now? Jim Clyburn. Obama. It's Obama. Nah, Jim Clyburn. Oh. You think it's that? Well, well, a combination, because Jim Clyburn is the one who got him over in the primaries. True, right? but it was with Obama's push and cosign. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, you yeah. could look at that as being hypocritical, or you could look at that as an example of what he's talking about, which is saying things is great, but there's practicality. There's pr- you got to be pragmatic, uh, you know, pragmatist. And, you know, Biden, I guess, was the pragmatic choice in their opinion. And I, and I think that's what people get, uh, get, get fucked up with Barack Obama, right? Like, I think we look at Barack Obama and the symbol, the symbol of Barack Obama is revolutionary, right? Black president right. of America, the head of, you know, black president of America, that's revolutionary. Like, oh shit, America got a black president? The symbol of Barack is revolutionary. But that's it. He's a politician at the end of the day. He's, he's, he's a centrist Democrat. Like he's, a, he, and he was explaining. Barely. Barely. Yeah. He actually leans a little bit more conservative in some ways. Would you say? Yeah. I mean, another thought I had, and I don't know if you've heard that, is there, has there been pushback? I mean, he's being very vocal right now. He's being very out in front right now because he has a book to promote. Right. Mm-hmm. Should he have been this outspoken before the election? Yes, Barack Obama should have been this outspoken two years ago, three years ago. And that's what I've always said. Once again, Democrats' messaging is terrible. The reason it's terrible is because everything that Donald Trump was doing was not normal. It, 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 was, it, was, fa- it was teetering on fascism. And it was, we, were, we were really headed into, you know, really being under a fascist regime in a real way. They didn't do a good enough job of ringing the alarm about that. They made it seem like he was just... Another Republican. I have a question to me. about that, though, because aren't you because people will argue they're happy that Donald Trump was the president because it brings out the racism. Like on the Democratic side, I hear people say that it brought out racism and that it's another perspective, like a real perspective instead of a politician perspective and everything. Well, one thing America's good at doing is looking at the bright side. <laughs> right? That's just the truth to the matter. Anything that's fucked up, anything that's negative, you can find something positive in it if you want to and it might be yeah. some bullshit you know what i mean but you can spin anything to make it seem like oh well you know this is this let's look at the bright side guys you know it's a lesson in everything there's a lesson in this and yeah sometimes the lesson is motherfuckers are stupid <laughs> right that's just, that's just the truth to the matter motherfuckers were stupid when they voted for donald trump we took the presidency for granted and, and i can understand why people felt that way because in our minds some of us felt like we never felt the trickle down effects of what a president was doing in the white house you know, but for whatever reason, it feel like everybody felt Trump. Everybody, all walks of life, black, white, rich, poor, everyone. It just feels like everybody 
felt that. And, um, you know, I was reading, I read Barack Obama's book because, you know, we interviewed Barack Obama last week and, you know, David Axelrod has a, has a line in the book that, um, made me think about, you know, what, a, what, a, what a second Trump administration could have looked like. And you know, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on record as saying, um, you know, the reason you can't connect with these brothers and sisters in the hood or connect with these brothers and sisters in these porn disenfranchised areas is because they're already in hell. And that's very true. But David Axelrod said, when people already have it bad, they don't possibly think it can get worse. But it can. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like, so I was just like, that is that is what a second a second Trump administration would have looked like for America. Like you, you yeah, yeah, you live in in, in hell right now, but shit could get way worse. Um, whatever that would have looked like. But luckily, luckily we avoided it. But you know, just to go back to what Barack Obama said. I don't think he's wrong about the 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 the, the premise of the defund the police slogan, as he called it, the snappy slogan. It's a non-starter for some people. Like, but let me ask you a question on that, though, uh-huh. because did the Democrats create the slogan "defund the police," or did that kind of organically rise out of what was happening on the streets, and yes. then they ran with it? Yes. And that's and that's 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 another point I'm trying to make. Thank you for saying that, Chris. Politicians are supposed to talk like activists. Right. Activists are supposed to talk like activists. Let the activists be radical. Let the activists talk about calling for defunding the police. Let the activists hit the streets and raise hell about police reform. And then the politicians that agree with them, but no, they can't go sit in Congress and try to get things like the funding the police passed as far as the title is concerned. But yes, we can, you know, al- uh, uh, reallocate resources from these police departments into the communities that need it. You just can't call it the funding the police. But once again, if you approach it with that narrative, if you approach it with that explanation, if you talk about the why, not the what, don't talk about the what, the, defend- the funding the police, the why. Why does this need to happen? Nobody can dispute the why. Nobody. I think it's kind of ridiculous, though, because when I hear defund, it's what also the definition of defund means, though. Why are people not understanding that? Because the Republicans took it and turned it into something it wasn't. Like, sit, like literally, they, they brainwashed America to make America think defunding the police means abolish. Defunding the police means get rid of. That's why the best person I've seen answer that question was Senator Kamala Harris. Well, now, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris, and I posted this yesterday on my Instagram when she was on The View, because Megan McCain, the way Megan McCain even worded the sentence, she said, what do you think about people wanting to defund the police, abolish the police? It's two different things. Kamala didn't even, didn't even bite on the defund the police. Kamala said, yes, uh, I do believe in, um, you know, taking away money from these bloated police budgets and giving it to the people that need it. And she was breaking down the things that people need. Then Megan McCain doubled down and came back and said, yeah, but what do you think about defunding the police? Kamala said, Define defunding the police. Don't even get caught up in the semantics. Of don't that, that's, that shit is a misnomer. Don't even get caught up in that. Like, we know what defunding the police is. We know the why of defunding the police. Focus on that. Everything else is just going to have you arguing about fucking words. Who gives a shit? That's my thoughts on it. I think that's all I have for Positively Brilliant. And what, what the fucking idiot. Um, what? How you liked Joyner Lucas on the Breakfast Club? Snoop Dogg getting a um, is he getting like a deal to be a? Oh, uh, we can do that and shit we won't care about next week. Okay, we can do that shit we don't care about next week. Um, let's face. Let's let me let me do this ad. Okay. Salute to Lucy. I want to thank Lucy for uh, being a sponsor of the Brilliant Idiots this week. Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Research and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Lucy also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine and cherry ice flavor. Each and every flavor actually tastes great and it's convenient and discreet. I've heard it tastes great. Okay. Um, it's so funny that we're doing this ad because in Barack Obama's book, A Promised Land, he talks about how he chews on nicotine gum 
because he was smoking seven and eight cigarettes a day, but the nicotine gum keeps him um, from doing that. So, man, if I have Barack Obama's address, I'd definitely send him some of these Lucy's, okay? Just know it's 2020. Get rid of your cigarettes like Barack Obama did. Unplug your vape. Throw out your dip. Oh, please throw out your motherfucking dip. I used to do dip when I was a kid. I did dip like once or twice. That shit is the most disgusting habit any human being could ever have. And one time I accidentally swallowed a little bit of it. I threw up so fucking much. Please get rid of the goddamn dip. I didn't even know they still sell dip nowadays. That's the thing that goes in between right here. Yes, man. Not a COVID friendly practice. Hell no. (laughs) Get rid of your dip and get some Lucy nicotine gum. Our lozenges, okay? This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple, and you don't have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. All right, brilliant idiots listeners, go to lucy.com and use promo code idiots to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.com and use promo code idiots at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer, okay? This product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. All right, so lucy.co. So go to lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code IDIOTS. <sighs> Let's pay some more bills. Um, I got to salute the Blue Chew. All right, I was absolutely talking to Blue Chew about Blue Chew last night in the group chat. Salute to my guys, Rob Markman and Hovain and B-Dot and Kaz. We were talking about uh, Blue Chew last night. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one of them said Blue Chew changed their life. But I don't want to give up no secrets. You know what I mean? I shouldn't even have said that because women don't need to know that we use performance enhancing drugs in the bedroom. Okay, it's a secret society. All we ask is trust. But this episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. And let's talk about something we could all use more of right now. And that's sex. Great sex. And I have it on a reliable source in my group chat that Blue Chew absolutely provides great sex. Okay. It's relevant and comfortable. Okay. Guys, you can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed with Blue Chew. Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. It's so crazy because when the person in the group chat was swearing by Blue Chew, I said, yo, Wax swears by Blue Chew. And I'm sitting there thinking about this. Wax got a baby coming. So clearly that Blue Chew motherfucking works. All right. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit Bluetooth.com and get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code IDIOTS. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's Blue, B-L-U-E, Chew.com. Promo code IDIOTS to try it for free. Blue Chew is the better, cheaper choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. And remember, when you support when you support our sponsors, you help make this podcast possible. So please be sure to use our promo code IDIOTS at Bluetooth.com. Now, Taylor. Give me some shit I won't care about next week. All right. So with Scotty Pippen, uh, Jr. Or not sorry, it's not even Scotty Pippen, but Larsa Pippen um, getting caught holding hands with Malik Beasley. Look at Malik Beasley. Malik <laughs> Beasley got framed. Black men don't cheat. It's fucked up how... By the way, that's social media in a nutshell. Social media in a nutshell is literally we see something, we're not even fully aware of what we're seeing because we're not seeing the full context of whatever that thing is, and we all form these opinions. I saw Malik Beasley walking in Miami, holding hands, and the way it was bought to me and the way it was spun to me was he was cheating on his wife. And I was like, yo, this young boy is wild. You know what I mean? I'm like, he's 24 years old. Black men don't cheat, but young black boys do. And I'm like, he's still in his boy phase. He walking around Miami, holding hands with his side chick. I was like, yo, this dude is wilding, and he clearly... Wants a divorce. Come to find out him and his wife been separated. But people are coming at Larsa because, you know, he's older or she's young. She's older than him and dating, you know, someone younger. That's and, corny. Huh? That's corny because that's a double standard. Don't nobody say that when old men be with younger girls. I know. But I just saw some reactions of people and like they had a picture of, I guess, their kids and saying mm-hmm. that they would be feeling that type of way. You know, the the sad part about that is we always speak from a perspective of um, not being in a person's shoes. Because guess what? I don't know how old Larsa Pippen is. How old is she? I don't know. I guess she has to be Kim's age, so I guess 40. Kim who? Kim Kardashian. They were friends. Google her age real quick. Let me see how old Larsa Pippen is. It might be fake, too. What, her age? Yeah. It says that she is, yeah, 46. 46 years old. You knocking that woman being 46 
fucking a 24 year old until you get 46 and you tired of fucking these niggas that's on blue chew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you get to a certain age and the only thing you could do is fuck these men that's on blue chew, they got to get this blue chew to, 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 to do you right. You're going to want some, some young penis too. All right. So don't, don't knock that woman. Like, I don't like that. That, that is a double standard that I don't approve of. Cause if that man was, if it was a 46 year old man with a 24 year old girl, motherfuckers would be applauding. Okay. And saluting that man. So normalize cougars being with young women. Shit, Taylor mom being my DMs okay. all the time. See, I knew, I knew something was about to happen. My mom is happily married with a black man. I'm not saying she's not. All I'm saying is she's been in my DMs for the past two weeks offering me pie. And what's her, what's her? Asking me over and over, has Taylor given you my pie yet? <laughs> Why do you make it sound? What I, what's her, what's her IG name? Um, Philly girl, two, <laughs> Philly chick, t- Philly chick 215. Oh, it's OG. Taylor's mom's IG is OG Philly chick 215. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Uh, I'm sorry they tried to frame you, my brother. Black men don't cheat. Keep up the good work. But the, his wife said that she was unaware of what was going on. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They separated. Like, 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 Never mind. They don't have to know. You're right. Um, so G Herbo, more, more shit we won't care about next week. G Herbo, he is charged in Massachusetts with elaborate fraud scheme with designer puppies, private jets, and Jamaican villa. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what a designer puppy is. I think it's the a baby a baby panda. I feel like the designer puppies are like kind of what what's that? Uh, what Kylie has. Um, she has these ugly little dogs and they're really, I don't like them, but what if we find out a designer puppy is a baby panda? It's not though, but these dogs are mad expensive though. Like a couple I don't of thousands. I don't, I don't have an opinion on the G Herbal situation. Just like I don't have an opinion on the Casanova situation. Um, because I feel, and I don't think G, I don't know if G Herbo was a Rico case. I think the Rico, I don't, I don't, is the Rico just in New York? I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know if the Rico is a national thing or not. I don't fucking know. I don't know. Um, but I feel like sometimes they grab these brothers who have a lot to lose and they lump them up in these cases, you know, with people that they may know, may not know, people that they may grow up with, have grown up with, whatever, just to try to get them to fold. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, just to try to get them to give up information just because they know that these brothers want to be be on the street and they just trying to, you know, convict people and build cases. So I don't know. I don't have an opinion because I don't know any of the details of the situation. I mean, I've, I've, I've read up on G Herbal's situation. I read up on Casanova's situation and I just think it's a terrible situation for, you know, both of those brothers to be in. And I truly do wish them the best because I just know them from being a radio personality and, you know, interviewing them and having conversations with them. You know, I met tax. I mean, I met um Casanova way back in the day. I think he had just came home and he was on house arrest. And you know, he was he was he was doing security to to make ends meet. You know, when you when you on probation or parole, you have to have a job. And at the time, that was his job. And you know, to see him transition from that to becoming a, a, a rapper and a personality that people enjoy and people fuck with, I thought that was dope. So. See him in this situation, I think is I think is horrible. So I don't I don't have an opinion on easy situation because I'm not a, I'm not one of y'all Instagram detectives, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, even I was a, tripping. I said what? I was gonna say even a former NFL player, um, Carlos Rogers was caught in a scam, too. But I didn't read up on him. This who? Carlos Rogers. He's from. Washington, the former Washington football team and San Francisco 49ers. I think I did read that story. All, listen, all of y'all motherfuckers that have been participating in PPP fraud, <laughs> you're going to fucking prison. <laughs> There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you have participated in PPP, PPP fraud in any way, shape, or form, you're going to fucking jail. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but you're going to fucking jail. So... God bless. All right. That's what you get. That fucking I, fake ass business. That fake ass business you put on that application. That shit is as real as Santa Claus. <laughs> I did hear that from someone who's uh involved in improving the loans that mm-hmm. they think 
and it's like you said, it's not going to happen today. It's not going to happen tomorrow, but they're going to come looking for this stuff, for the documentation and the proof. And the person who told me was like, give it two, maybe three years. A lot of people are going to get caught up in a lot of problems. Yes. A lot of people getting caught up now. But don't they, they, they Well, yeah, they, they, they've arrested a lot of people for PPP fraud, but it's going to be worse in the next two or three years because right now they get the big guys, right? The guys that are stupid enough to get a million dollars from PPP or hundreds of thousands of dollars. But all right. you little ten thousand dollar motherfuckers, y'all going to jail too? <laughs> well, I I just heard someone in or someone that I went I went to school with. She just got caught four hundred thousand really? from a small business mm. that she mm. that she never had. The business never existed. It's, it's a whole other story with her. That's pink p- pink pussy lips LLC. It's all for a nigga. What you mean? She just spent mad bread on him, and it was four hundred thousand. Like, wow! <laughs> now he's gonna be out here dicking down another girl with 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 money that you risked your life for, took a penitentiary chance for. I don't feel sorry for them people, man. I really don't. And the main reason I don't feel sorry for them is because I know a lot of people with small businesses who couldn't get access to that money. That's the other thing that bugs me out, though. How is it so easy for? The scammers to get loans, but people who have actual legitimate small businesses. She used their card, though. Them. She used their card. What do you mean? Like they they had a business card, and she just would run, um, or spend money on that card. And then How much up. you get? I didn't. I didn't even know what was going on. Don't do that. I just saying that I know someone, and now the guy left her for a white girl. That's all I'm gonna say. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of white. Every girl <laughs> you saw on vacation during the pandemic in a white swimsuit absolutely was participating in PPP fraud. <laughs> the, 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 the white swimsuit is a telltale sign of motherfucking PPP fraud. The white swimsuit with a random woman on vacation, telltale sign of PPP fraud. Mark my words. I know somebody that's going to jail. Watch. Two years from now, Taylor. Uh, <laughs> Watch. About? Two years from now, she going to jail. <laughs> Mark my motherfucking words. Give but you me. know the thing with the the PPP, it's not only fraudulent businesses that don't exist. I mean, at the end of the day, these things are loans, and I think a lot of people are op- operating as if it's free yes. money. Yes, you're going to have to pay this back. Now, granted, you're not going to have to pay it back at any sort of significant interest rate, but you're still. So if you get seventy. You still got to pay that 70 back. Maybe not this year, maybe not next year. But, you know, I think a lot of people just assume it's all going to be forgiven or it's free money. It's not. It's a loan. So well, that's it's, how it's, for, it's forgiven if you can if you're actually using it to pay employees. If you if you can prove that you yes. have kept the same people on payroll for an extended me- period of time, I think they do forgive those. But for people who just kind of fudged it and came up with like fake employees that were like, you got to give that money back. And I don't think people are really prepared for that. I mean, cause I, I, I got a PPP loan, but mm. I actually, I actually have employees and I used right. it for my employees and I didn't get no crazy ass amount of money. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I, and, and I, I did it cause my financial team said I could do it. I was like, why not? You have employees, you know, that I, and I kept all my people on payroll. I mean, you see with JT, what happened to her? It wasn't, that's why she went to jail in the first place. Salute to JT. <laughs> Today's JT born day, God damn it. Y'all gonna start showing JT some motherfucking respect. Okay, JT from the City Girls, and I was telling um, Taylor this earlier, JT from the City Girls is is actually one of the dopest female rappers out. And if COVID hadn't a hit, the City Girls absolutely, positively would have been the biggest shit of the summer. Because that project that they put out, the... Um, what was it called? City on Lock? Yeah. I think it was called City on Lock. City on Lock is a phenomenal motherfucking project. Just the records they had on there, like, um, boy, this pussy talk. That's your favorite you know song on there. <laughs> Yo, don't act like JT, Young Miami, and Doja Cat didn't snap on pussy talk. <laughs> Show some fucking respect to JT. <laughs> fucking broke niggas. Broke niggas don't deserve no pussy. Now that's a slogan. That's a that's a slogan, not even a republic. Saying that, just be clear. No, she ain't saying it like that. No, 
It was, How she said it? It was on one of her songs, like her mixtapes and everything. Well, I know one thing. Not even a Republican could fucking ruin that slogan. <laughs> it ain't no remixing broke niggas don't deserve no pussy. That is real, clear, cut, precise, and to the point. Young Miami got busy on that. Uh, JT got busy on that. JT said, uh, JT said, the only thing, what's, what she said? <laughs> oh, she said, the only thing white is the lies that you telling. And you ain't moving work, that's dreams that you selling. If you really in the kitchen, pay a bitch tuition. She ain't asking for no fucking scams. She don't want no car. She don't want no Birkin. She did ask for a Birkin in the beginning of it. But on top of the Birkin, if you really in the motherfucking kitchen, pay a bitch tuition, God damn it. That's, yo, by the way, that's how you take a negative and turn it into a positive. You're doing something you ain't got no business doing. You, you, you're in the kitchen, you're cooking up dope, you're selling dope. Take that money, invest into somebody else. Take that money, pay a girl's tuition. Let her go make something of herself because you're just going to go to jail. And guess what might happen? When you go to jail in two or three years, she might be your attorney because you paid her fucking tuition. Y'all going to show JT some goddamn respect. <laughs> Happy born day to JT, man. JT, I'm telling you, right now, if this, if the COVID hadn't hit, that album the City Girls put out earlier this summer would have been the biggest fucking shit. Those two young ladies make great music. That's Amazing music. That ratchet shit that y'all like? So, so wait, wait. So, going on to that, because I think y'all talked about it a couple of weeks ago. That, no, it happened this week. When the guy um, got upset, the owner got upset with people Ooh. dancing on the furniture. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw that. So, if that song came on, would you think that, like, okay. Yo, broke <laughs> niggas don't deserve no brunch. <laughs> All right. And yo, stop. The, first of all, that restaurant, I, f I think it's called True Kitchen Cocktails yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Why do y'all keep talking about the music? Explain that to me. What did the music have to do with that situation? Like you say, like there's some tales or there's some, what do you call it? Some spiritual. Negro spiritual. Yeah, Negro spirituals that make you want to, you know, I want to go as far as like, I didn't know they were hopping on furniture, but you know, it makes you want to twerk and, every, and dance. That man went to those women Two times. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't asked him, asked him nicely to just cool out. You know what I'm saying? Let's enjoy brunch. You know, let's 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 you know, no twerking or whatever the fuck it was. That young lady, as a fuck you, intentionally stood on the table, put her hands on the glass, and started twerking. Yeah. What did you expect that man to do? What do you what do you think the white man would have done in that situation? The cop. You think the white man would have been calm and collective and went and had a conversation with them a couple of times? No, the white man would have called the police mm -hmm. and had them dragged the fuck out. Yeah. That, that brother went to them twice, acknowledged them, asked them to please stop. They didn't stop. She did that as a fuck you. Now, I don't think he should have stood in front of the restaurant and cursed at everybody. Yeah, that's what I didn't understand that part. But I, but I, didn't, I didn't mind the speech. I didn't mind the speech. I just didn't like him telling them to get the fuck out. Yeah. But I didn't mind the speech because I don't know what context that speech was in. I don't know if those young ladies were still there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it was. I don't know, you know, why he chose to have that conversation to that to that room in that way. But I think it's different when you're black and you're talking to a group of black people. He thought that he could connect with his people in a different way. Like it was almost like talking to family. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like I'm a I'm a black business owner. So I want to have this, you know, I, I, uh, Martin Luther King, I have a brunch speech. You know what I mean? And I want to connect with y'all in, in, in a real way. I didn't I didn't think he did anything wrong, to be totally honest, other than telling him, that, saying, yo, get the fuck out, like saying that to the whole restaurant. I don't think he should have talked to the whole restaurant in that way based off, you know, what happened with that young lady. But once again, he's an owner. That's his motherfucking spot. You walk in these white people establishment, that shit say no shirt, no socks, no shoes, no service. Y'all don't give the white man no lip. You put your goddamn shoes on, you put your motherfucking shirt on, and you go in there and you get your service. Treat the black people with the same respect. Yeah, I get that too. But you know what? Back to your other question. Well, does Dwayne make sure that's a clip? Because I saw um, a meme that was like about based off of that, what happened. And... I'll just show it to you because they were saying black people um, will dance to anything. And it was like a video of a black person dancing to like the ice cream song and everything. 
the ice cream song? What the fuck is like the ice cream, ice cream song? truck song? Huh? I'll show you the video. Don't worry. What does that have to do with what we're talking about? Because you're saying what's the you were asking in the first question, you said why um what was wrong with the music that he was playing or why y'all make I don't think I'm I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with the music. Yes, you walk into an establishment and you know if I hear motherfucking, you know, boy, that pussy talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fucking, I'm a I can't help it. You know what I'm saying? I hear knuck if you buck. It makes me feel the way. I can't help it. Those are Negro spirituals. But she did that as a fuck you. Yeah. She didn't do that because she couldn't. Don't, first of all, is throw that ass in a circle of spirit, a Negro spiritual? In Philly, it is. It is? I remember that song yeah. a lot. <laughs> Either way, I don't think it had nothing to do with the music. I just think it was a sign. It was it was disrespectful. No, it, and, it and, was. Uh, especially if you're like, he went back to them and she just kept. Yeah, music. man. Come on. Oh, he, he serves good food there, too. Clearly, that shit was packed and ain't nobody in there had on no motherfucking mask. That's the shit y'all should be complaining about. <laughs> no, but they were sitting down inside, don't you? Man, there wasn't no social distance and then people was close as hell. They were, they were, they were. But I'm just saying. All right, give me some more shit you won't care about next um, week. Drake announces launch of Nike Sub Label, which he also- I like the name of it. What is it called? I didn't look at the thing. Not, not, it's like short for nocturnal. And he said it's for like the creative who be up at night. Nocturnal I like creative process, yeah. I, I, I like that. The What's the name of it? What's the actual name of it? Nocturnal creative process. But I thought it was short. I thought it was like Nocto or something like that. Yeah, Nocta. N O C T A. I love that name. I think that's dope. Hold on. N O C T A. Is that an acronym for something? Let's see. Um. Either way, I like it. I like the whole, I like the branding of the nighttime creative process because that's tapping into, um, that's tapping into a market people haven't tapped into yet. And I, and I used to always like when Drake, um, would, would tweet out scary hours. Well, I only remember him doing that once and that was when back to back dropped. So I could be biased. <laughs> and the candle uh, he's making. I, I don't care about that this week. <laughs> okay. I don't give a fuck. I don't want a candle that smells like Drake. Well, if he smells good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I tell I, you, he should he should have one called Bottom. Why? <laughs> that should be the first one. Started from the bottom. Would you buy a Drake candle yeah. <laughs> called Bottom? That should be the first one he puts out called Bottom. Now you would look buying a candle. You're like, yo, it smells like Drake, and that should called Bottom. Yeah. So this is you smells like Drake's bottom. Oh, Drake's ass. My Aubrey's ass. Okay, more shit you won't care about. <laughs> Um, you didn't talk about with like Obama gonna uh, take the what's that shit called the test what? the COVID vaccine um in camera on camera. Yeah, I don't know if y'all heard um, Barack Obama. It was him, uh, George Bush, Bill Clinton, Clinton. And, yeah. George Bush said they'll all take the vaccine for coronavirus. I don't give a shit. First of all, how do we know that they're getting it? And they said they would do it publicly. How do we know they get actually getting the real virus injected into them? I mean, the real vaccine injected into them. We don't fucking know. Yeah. Like They can show us anything on TV. How do we know that they're actually getting injected with the vaccine? And I'm not an anti-vaccine person, even though I've never gotten the flu vaccine in my life. Um, clearly, when I was younger, we got vaccinated because, you know, you had to to be in school and stuff. And, you know, my kids have had shots now to be in school, but I'm not going to be the first person in line for that damn COVID-19 vaccine. I'm not either. And Barack Obama was talking and uh, he said something like he understands why black people, you know, are leery about taking the vaccine because of the Tuskegee experiment and things of that nature. And it's just like, so I'm going to take it to show y'all. Let's never forget Barack Obama's half white. <laughs> that's, his, that's his white side talking. You know what I'm saying? The black side of him is like, you take, stick it in one, stick it in the left arm. The right arm is the black side. We ain't we cool over here. Like, they, like that's his white side talking, telling everybody to go out there and take your vaccine. The black side is like, eh, I don't know, Barry. They also said that healthcare workers and long term care facilities will be like the first or suggested to take the first ones. As they should. Yeah. As they should. Yes. Healthcare workers are around people with coronavirus all the time. Um, you know, people who watch over older folks. They should be, they should be, you know, on the front lines of taking it. Chris, you gonna take it? 
Uh, I'm very torn about it, to be perfectly honest. Um, and, I don't think and you're not even you're not even black or white. You're not even black and white like Barack and you torn. So imagine how Barack feel. Exactly. I don't I don't actually take the flu vaccine because of Lyme. So I really don't take vaccines anymore. Um, but if you, if you look at what a vaccine is, I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking like, OK, they say this vaccine has a 93 percent, you know, rate of success. And I think people mean, think that means if you get the shot, there's a 93% chance you don't get COVID. It doesn't work like that. What it really is about is how many people take the vaccine in general. So the thing's only going to be successful if the vast, vast, vast majority of Americans take the vaccine. If not, the percentage could be down like 50 or something because the COVID's still going to be circulating. So on one hand, I know for this thing to go away and for the country to get back to where it needs to be, I need to be part of the the overall population that's taking the vaccine. We all do. That's the only way that any of this shit's going to work. On the flip side, I'm like you. I don't want to be the first one. I want somebody else to take it. But the problem is, how long is it going? It's not like people are going to take the vaccine and, and fall down and drop dead or get sick the next day. Any side effects will probably take weeks or months to kind of rise to the surface anyway. So it's 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 a real tricky situation, to be honest. By the way, they don't need us. And by us, I mean black people. Sure they do. Majority, uh, white people make up, what, 70% of this fucking country? Let all yeah. of them go out there and get the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's more than enough. Are you saying, Chris, that a, a large majority of people have to get the vaccine in order to create some type of herd immunity? I don't understand what that what you were saying. Essentially, it, it, there's there's two terms. It's like efficiency versus, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but kind of in like layman's language, almost everybody has to take it for it to work. And you mm. you can say white people will take it. I can promise you, the people who aren't going to take it are all these Republicans who are running around refusing to wear masks and that sort of stuff. So right there, you can take all those people off the board. Then you got African-Americans who are historically, for a reason, skeptical about taking vaccines. So, I, you know, as I see it now, you're going to have a large segment of the population who's not going to want to take this thing right off the bat. So people are talking about, you know, they're going to start rolling it out in the next couple of weeks and return to normalcy by summer. I don't quite see it but I, I hope I'm, I'm wrong. You think they'll make it mandatory? I doubt it. If they didn't make math mandatory, I don't think they'll make the vaccine mandatory. The biggest problem I have, man, is, um, you know, you hear certain people talk and they talk about how, you know, coronavirus is impacting the black community and you got to make sure that this vaccine gets to the people that need it most, you know, and, and, and I think, I think it was Governor Cuomo who said, um, you know, we got to make sure black and brown people have access to this. I don't like shit like that. And the reason I don't like shit like that is because they don't have that sense of urgency when it comes to anything else. Where's, right. the sense of urgency? Where's the sense of urgency to invest money into the black community? Where's the sense of urgency to make sure our schools are good? Where's the sense of urgency to make sure that, you know, the police are defunded? Where's the sense of urgency for job training programs? Like, there's no sense of urgency to ever put any great resources in our community any other time. But when it comes to this vaccine, all of a sudden motherfuckers want to be Captain Saver, nigga. And freaking come through the hood with this, like no. right? Because we need you. I don't like that. We need you right now. That's basically what it is. Well, I'm not with it, <laughs> but I'm. But listen, I'm not. I'm not gonna say I'm against it. I'm just saying I'm not gonna be on the front lines. I treat it like a fucking PlayStation. Y'all run out there, pay all that money for the new PlayStation Five, and then six months when they got the bugs worked out and they got better updates, that's what. That's when I'll go out there and grab one. If 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 I need it, I may not even need it. Mm -hmm. uh, what else think, you got, Taylor? Yeah. Well, go ahead, Chris. What'd you say? No, nah, everyone's going to have to get it at some point. It's just how many people... I think as many people are skeptical like us, there are going to be just as many people maybe who are going to be like, oh, a vaccine, fine, sign me up, and then I can go back to normal. But then the problem is you're going to have those people going back to normal. They're going to be exposed. So, you know, long story short, buckle up. I, you know, I don't, I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel, but again, I hope I'm wrong. Really? Nah, it's definitely light at the end of the tunnel. Screech's going to be back to normal by summertime, Chris. I hope so. Mm. I hope so, too. But do you think that, like, no mask, like, no one's going to be still... No, 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 no. I would still wear masks. I mean, I think the uh, the Asians had it right. Yes. I used to walk to the airport and used to see 
Asians with the mask on. And I used to always say to myself, I used to always say to myself, and I used to tell my wife, what the fuck do they know that we don't know? <laughs> like, why are they, why are they always wearing masks? This, this is years. They've been wearing masks. Every, right, Chris? every year when I go to Taiwan, you take the subway, you walk down the street, a lot of people have masks on. And again, the thing to remember is the mask isn't about protecting you. It's about protecting other people. It's to stop you from spreading your germs to other people. So I I think masks are here to stay. I mean, I, I don't see myself taking a subway without a mask. I might get on the subway next year. I'm going to have a mask on. I can't see myself yeah. getting a haircut or anything where I'm in close proximity to somebody without a mask. I, I mean, I think people are going to be wearing masks going forward. and. Uh, that's just how it's been in Asia. And I think we're going to adopt that. And, uh, you know, they knew it's the same way. Like, uh, Asians don't wear shoes in, inside. The second you come inside, not all Asians, but you know, my wife's family, a lot of Asians don't wear shoes. And, you know, when my wife started asking me to take my shoes off, I was like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. I never took my shoes off coming inside. Once you start doing it, what you mean? that's a South thing. Is that a South thing too? Yeah. Wipe your feet and take your shoes off when you walk in my house. No, no, my wife. Don't I mean, take take your shoes off and leave them by the door. Yes, my wife said now. We <laughs> no, what, take your white, shoes off white, white people are late to that, but uh, I'm here to tell you: once you start doing it, you realize it makes a lot of sense. You're not tracking dog shit, piss, all that dirt all around your house. We've been I, we've been doing that since we was kids. Exactly. <laughs> take your shoes. I'm talking about as soon as you walk in. Take them shoes. Don't you bring them dirty yeah. ass shoes in my house immediately? Really? Like, like yes, yeah. hell yeah. That's I can't get like out with today. People not not washing their legs in the shower. This falls into the same category. No, wash your legs, bro. I keep hearing that. Is that I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, I think there's probably some truth to it. Why wouldn't you wash your legs? Like, like, what? That's a stretch. Isn't the same thing as guys? Y'all don't wash y'all jeans like that, right? White people don't wash their legs and black men don't work out their legs. <laughs> there you go. Big as hell at the top. <laughs> and, don't, and don't do no leg workout. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep wearing a mask. The mask are tricky, though. Masks make you brush your teeth more. That I'll tell you. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie. I, w- I walked out of the radio station the other day and I kept saying to Paige, I'm like, do you smell dog shit? Did we step in something? <laughs> and I kept smelling it. And I'm like, Yo, what the fuck? Boy, that shit was humbling when you get in the car and realize it's your breath. <laughs> that shit Yo, is right humbling. Said that a lot of people weren't going to uh, wash or brush their teeth anymore because of the mask. No, <laughs> hell no. Ain't no way in hell because whatever your mouth smell like comes right back to you when you got that damn mask on. All right, that's it for shit you won't care about next week. Um, let's pay some bills, come back and do some church announcements Ooh. and then do some asking idiots. You forgot one thing. Yeah. What? You guys want to talk here. about the uh, Dave Chappelle, um, like going Netflix? You don't care? Oh, we didn't talk. Oh, we was off last yeah. week. Yeah. Um, Dave Chappelle and Netflix. What were my thoughts on Dave Chappelle and Netflix? My thoughts on Dave Chappelle. I think Dave Chappelle summed it up very well when Dave Chappelle said they didn't do anything wrong because I signed the contract. I signed the contract. No, no. He said what they're doing is perfectly legal because I signed the contract. But is it right? It's a good question. Can you explain what it is? Because I didn't really understand what that story was about. Okay. uh, We can insert some of it. Basically, Dave Chappelle, uh, Chappelle show was on Netflix. Dave Chappelle doesn't get any money from Netflix screaming the Chappelle show. God. Because of a deal he signed with CBS Viacom, um, or Viacom back in the day. And um, you know, it's that line, man, that line that says, you know, we 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 own your IP for perpetuity. You know what I mean? Which is a line that I get taken out quite often. That's just in the contract. That's the thing about contracts. Like you can't even take contracts, you can't even be offended by them. Like it's nothing to take personal. It's business. You know what I mean? And you just have to negotiate your business properly. Dave Chappelle said, I was 28 years old. He was young in the game, right? He had a newborn son. He just wanted to eat. So he signed something. Some people can say he got taken advantage of. Probably did, you know? But he's 28 years old. He's 28 years old. He's young. You know, he didn't know any better. And now that he's older and he has the leverage to change that situation, 
He's using it. Um, that's that's usually how it goes in the game, right? When you're young, you sign some bullshit, you get got. A lot of people don't get the opportunity to become a Dave Chappelle and can make that corporation right that wrong. By the way, the people who signed Dave Chappelle back in the day, they're not at Viacom no more. They long gone. So <laughs> they, they, they're long gone. But Viacom still has the rights to, 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 to that IP. So, so shouldn't he be having the convo with Viacom then? I mean, I'm assuming Netflix is paying Viacom, so he should be getting the cut of what Viacom is getting. Well, he is. His, 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 his energy was directed towards Viacom. He had Got nothing it. but love and praise for Netflix because Netflix, when he went to Netflix and told Netflix the situation, they removed Chappelle's show. Got it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So his 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 gripe is with Viacom. But I I think I'm pretty sure Viacom is gonna, gonna make that right. You know, but once again, everybody don't get to be Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle is a force of nature. You know, he's he's a, he's a movement unto himself. He's a he's a legend, and I think the way that he broke it down was very accurate. I signed the contract, but I signed the contract the way that a twenty eight year old expectant father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate. I needed a way out, and it wasn't good money, and it wasn't good circumstances. But uh, what else am I gonna do? I said, and all these white people sitting at that table told me, "Trust us, Dave. It's a good contract." And I looked around the table, and they all seemed to agree it was a good contract. But what if, what if they were all friends, and I didn't know it? And I'm not up here trying to tell you guys that I believe that Comedy Central gave me a raw deal just because I'm black. I believe that they gave me a raw deal because this fucking industry is a monster. Stuff like that is supposed to happen to you when you're green. And then when you evolve and you get older, you do what Chappelle is doing now. Some people choose to handle it behind the scenes. Some people choose to use their platform and, and voice their, you know, discomfort with the situation. I can't find the Chappelle. It's not on, the Chappelle show isn't on any platforms now. I don't know if it's not on any platforms. I know it's not on Netflix anymore. I, know, I was, I think man, I was watching on, that. I never watched it. I think it's still like on that. HBO Max. But, you know, yeah. he's 28 years old. You know, um, like I said, it, 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 when I tell people things like, you know, it's all about how you negotiate. Yeah, when you get to a certain age, when you're in your late 30s, early 40s, and you done been around the block several times, yeah, you shouldn't be getting got. Like, if I get got at this point in my career, it's on me. Because I've been here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been here. Another thing Dave Chappelle said that was very sharp was when he talked about, you know, lawyers and agents and managers and making sure they're not all in cahoots. You know what I'm saying? Because when they're when they're all in cahoots, they just trying to get the best deal for themselves. I've been in situations like that with agents. I've been in situations where, you know, I thought an agent was looking out for my best interest. But the reality is the agent was representing me and representing a whole bunch of other talent. And sometimes they negotiate against each other. Like they'll be like, well, look, I'll 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 get I'll get Charlemagne to sign for this when I probably should have got way more. But I'll get Charlemagne to sign for this, you know. Um, but you got to give this person over here a little bit more, That's or right. vice versa. I'll, 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 uh, I'll get this person to sign for this amount, or make sure Charlemagne gets this. I don't like that. Yeah. You know, that's 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 whack. But that's just the game, and <laughs> you got to know that. And Dave knows that now, and Dave also knows who he is. So therefore, Dave is like, run me my motherfucking money. Let's go back to the table and make this a fair situation for. For all parties involved, you know? But um I was also wondering too, I was wondering if 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 I was wondering if at some point, because I it's I it's hard for me to believe that Dave did two seasons of Chappelle's show, um, about to do a third season. Clearly it had to be some type of renegotiating going on because they offered him that fifty million dollar deal that he ultimately walked away from. So I wonder if you know, what he wants now, he could have got back then if he hadn't walked away. Mm. Because clearly, 
there was some renegotiations that happened. Clearly, it had to be. Two seasons of Chappelle Show, and then they coming off of him this big $50 million check. Like, it had to be some other type of renegotiations that were happening in that scenario. So I was just wondering if he breached in some way, shape, or form because he, he, he walked away from the contract. But, you know, other than that, I think Chappelle is doing what, what, what we all should do. You live and you learn. It's not like Chappelle signed this deal at 40-something years old. It was, it was, he was 28. Brand new, green, had a new child. He said that himself. And, you know, like he said, you know, what they did was perfectly legal, but is it right? That is the question. That is absolutely the question. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if it's right or not. I just think it's business. And I think in business, there's no permanent enemies. There's no permanent friends. That's it. So when you see situations like Dave Chappelle, all you youngins, you know, when, when, you, when you don't, I, I can't even sit here and say when you don't have that leverage, because I don't think none of y'all are in a position to not have that leverage anymore. And what, and, and, and what I mean by that is most of these people that are getting deals from these corporations now, they're getting deals based off work that they're already doing on their own. They're getting, you know, partnerships now because of the fact that they have all of these social media followers or because they have all of these analytics that corporations can look to and say, oh, He's got this many views on YouTube or she's got this many views on YouTube or she sold this many records independently or, you know, she started her own YouTube channel and she's already got a built in audience like they got to approach you a little different when you've already built your own. So I can't even sit here and say these kids don't have, you know, no leverage because they have all the leverage in the world. Trust me, I'm I'm an executive. You know, what I mean, I'm in these rooms. You know what I'm saying? I'm in these rooms having these conversations about, you know, this next wave of radio personality, podcasted, TV, whatever it is. I'm hearing the conversation. I'm telling you kids. I'm not, I'm, once again, I tell you all this all the time. You can either listen to the people who've never done it, try to tell you how to do it, or listen to the people that are doing it, tell you how it's done. I'm telling you, you people have all the leverage in the world if you're building things on your own. They're watching all of this shit. They're, they they know exactly how much analytics you got. They know exactly what your numbers are. You just got to make sure you know all of that. So when you pull up to the table, you can take it or leave it. You know, and, that, and it's, ve it's very hard. It's, and it's been hard for some years. It's very hard to negotiate with this, this, this era, this generation, unless you're offering them some real life-changing shit Cause they already good. They making money. They making millions of dollars doing what they're doing. So you got to approach these kids with partnerships. You got to approach these people with partnerships. They don't fucking need you. I think I, I saw something the other day with 85 South show got like 300 million views on YouTube just off their podcast. Some extraordinary number that, that major TV shows don't have. That, that major networks who have YouTube pages, they don't even got those kind of views. So what the fuck can you do with 85 South Show except approach them as a partner? That's it. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing else you can do with, some, with, with, with people like that. And they not the only ones is all I'm saying. So trust me, man, you brothers and sisters, you got all the motherfucking leverage. Use it. Guys like Dave Chappelle, they went through that so you don't have to go through that. That's it. And now let's pay some bills. Huh? Before that, just making it clear we got everything. The Snoop Dogg, what was your thoughts on him doing uh, the commentary? I thought that Snoop Dogg offered a real nigga perspective. And I think real nigga perspective always cuts through to the bullshit. When you're listening to the announcers talk about, oh my God, he look at that punch. Oh, he got hit. Oh, he's down for the count. That's some old school dumb yeah. shit. And by the way, there was an announcer up there with him like that. I can't remember the guy's name, but he's that he sounded like an old school announcer. When you're just sitting there watching Snoop talk like how you and your homies are sitting around talking. That shit cuts through. I run here Snoop Dogg on every... <laughs> if he was a commenter on any sports thing, I'm watching it because... I'm you know why? <laughs> Real nigga perspective. Real nigga perspective always cuts through. I tell y'all this shit all the time. I watch. <laughs> and on anything, when I first started in radio, the best thing that ever happened to me was I did not know how to do radio. I still don't know how to fucking do radio. <laughs> I still don't know. Real, I, like, you know what I'm saying? I just used to be open the microphone and talk the way that 
we talk in the hood. The way that we communicate in the hood, that's all I knew. I didn't have background experience as a journalist, as a broadcaster, whatever, whatever. That's why my dumb ass got fired four times. But guess what? I stuck to that. And the reason I stuck to that is because all I know how to do is be me. I don't have, you know, experiences. I mean, I know I have experiences. I don't have like education in a certain thing. You know what I mean? Like nobody taught me how to do this. Like I don't have any other way other than to approach this microphone and be me. And that's what Snoop Dogg does everywhere he goes. There is nobody better at being Snoop Dogg than Snoop Dogg. Just like there's nobody better at being you than you. And that's why you motherfucking keep losing because you keep trying to be a second rate version of something else instead of being a first rate version of your motherfucking self. And salute to Snoop for that performance during like the halftime, whatever it was. And Lil Wayne was supposed to. I never enjoy someone, I could not really enjoy rappers solo, but I enjoy Snoop's performance. Like I could, I could watch him all day. That's that's what you call classic catalog. Yeah. Little Wayne, by the way, there's not one artist who performed at that 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 uh I didn't see the other ones. Well no, you know, I take that back. I took it back. French Montana performed, YG performed. Um French was with uh French was with Sway Lee. Yeah. I'm missing somebody. French, okay. Sway Lee, YG. Somebody else performed and it's slipping my mind right now. I can't. Oh, St. John. And I think somebody else. But they all fit. And the reason they fit is because you had the undercards and you had the Nate Paul. I mean, the Nate Robinson, Jake Paul fight. That all made sense, right? Got the young artists out there, whatever, whatever. The reason Snoop was better than Wayne, because Wayne would have ended up being the headliner, because I think Snoop performed last minute because Wayne didn't. The reason Snoop was better is because Roy Jones is of the 90s. Mike Tyson is of the late 80s, 90s. And as Snoop said during his commentary, he came up in that Roy Jones, Mike Tyson era. He His music and Death Row was providing the soundtrack for that whole wave. Like, we, you know, Tupac, the night Tupac got killed, he was at a Mike Tyson fight. Or the night he got shot and then eventually died, he was at a Mike Tyson fight. So Snoop's music was the perfect soundtrack leading into that Mike Tyson Roy Jones situation. And that's just classic catalog. Like, you know, uh, Snoop Dogg got nuclear weapons, bro. Like, that's just a... Once again, man, Snoop is a one-on-one. Like, you can't duplicate Snoop Dogg if you tried. And trust me, many people have tried and they have failed. He's a one-on-one. Just like Dave Chappelle is a one-on-one. Some people are just one-on-ones. And all of us, not not even just some people, every single person on this planet is a one-on-one. You just got to be confident enough in yourself to lean into yourself. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. We get we get so caught up in seeing other motherfuckers and what they're doing and, and we see what's working for them and we try to duplicate that. And that's how you lose. Once again, don't be a second-rate version of somebody else when you can be a first-rate version of your motherfucking self. Yeah. Now can I pay these bills, Taylor? You still want me to talk about a bunch of shit I don't care about? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> All right, let's pay some bills. Care of. Care of is a wellness brand that makes it easy to maintain your health goals with a customized vitamin plan that helps you feel your best today and supports you long term. Okay, all of Care of's products are formulated with good for you, clean ingredients that are backed by science. Okay, your recommendations come in daily, individually wrapped packets that are perfect for getting back into a routine. Care of's in depth five-minute online quiz ask you questions about your diet, lifestyle, and health concerns to help address your specific wellness goals. Imagine getting a one-on-one consultation with a nutritionist all without leaving your house. That's the ease of care of, okay? Just follow care of's expert recommendations or adjust your pack at any time. What you receive is totally up to you. Now, the seasons are changing. And as the seasons change, it's important to get ahead of taking care of your immune health. I'm telling you because, you know, I always get like seasonal allergies, but I get them during the winter. So I'll be having like this dry cough. That shit is scary during this COVID-19 time. You know what I mean? I'm not even lying. I literally thought I had COVID about two weeks ago just because I had this cough and this itchiness in my throat and I was having a headache, took a COVID test. I was negative, but I had to say to myself, this happens to me every year. You know what I'm saying? And, And it takes about 30 days for your body to adapt to new nutrients. So now is a great time to update your vitamin and wellness routines to help support your immune system. 
during this fall and this winter. Okay, so for 50% off your first care of order, go to TakeCareOf.com and enter code IDIOTS50. That's TakeCareOf.com and code IDIOTS50 for 50% off your first care of order. Also, I got to salute Cushy Dreams, man. Cushy Dreams, thank you, you know, for also being a sponsor with the Brilliant Idiots this week. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. They specialize in extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower, aka bud, and pre roll CBD joints. What is CBD? CBD is basically weed without the psychological, you know, uh, factors, right? It doesn't make you see things, it doesn't make you hear things, okay? It just relaxes you. You can enjoy all of the health benefits of CBD without getting high. All right, it's cannabis that ships directly to you and it's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. It looks like high quality marijuana, feels like high quality marijuana and tastes like high quality marijuana. Cushy is 100% hand trimmed, never machine trimmed. Each batch is slow cured for two to four weeks to guarantee maximum freshness and preserve flavor and cannabinoids. All right, best of all is grown in the USA. Cushy Dreams has CBD flower in uh, and it has pre-rolls, okay? They come in specific indigo sativa blends like energy, hustle, relax, and dream. I'm serious. You can literally pick your mood, okay? If you feel like hustling, smoke some DVD that'll make, CBD that'll make you hustle. You feel like relaxing, smoke some CBD that'll make you relax. Just go to cushydreams.com. That's K-U-S-H-Y. Get some high quality CBD bud at checkout. Use promo code IDIOTS for 20% off your next order. Smoke your CBD. All right, now let's get back to the show. The announcements are a very important part of what we do in church. All right, now I got some church announcements. First of all, I'm serious. Andrew Schultz is pregnant. And um, he's, he's going to deliver at any moment. And I can't wait. I cannot wait to see this child um, that Andrew Schultz is birthing. I'm serious. Andrew Schultz has been cooking up, and I'm very proud of him. And, um, you know... I, I know y'all missing Andrew from the podcast. I miss Andrew from the podcast. You know, I, I really enjoy doing Brilliant Idiots. Um, I enjoy talking to Andrew, you know, because I'm able to come in here and, you know, really talk about things that happen during the week, things that happen, you know, not just in, in, in society and culture, but things that happen in our own lives. I get to, you know, expound on things that happen on The Breakfast Club. And I really enjoy that. I really do. I really do appreciate it. You know what I mean? I, I love Andrew's perspective on things. So, yes, I miss him when he's not here on Brilliant Idiots as well. But I promise you, you're going to be proud of our guy when you find out why uh, he's been missing. Well, (laughs) missing prior to the other shit that happened. But I'll let him tell you about that. But um, other church announcements, uh, I want y'all to please go out there and pre-order Tamika Mallory's upcoming book state of emergency um it'll be out may 11th 2021 but you can pre-order now wherever you buy books um that's courtesy of black privilege publishing and shaman and schuster um i hope y'all took advantage of the black friday sale i hope y'all took advantage of the cyber monday sale um from what i saw y'all did so i thank you for that i really do i genuinely appreciate that man you know i I love tamika you know I, i really i call her i call her our leader she's my leader only because she's really on the front lines and tamika cares about us. She cares about black people in a real way. And when I support somebody and I stand beside somebody, I'm doing it because I really see who that person is. And, you know, Tamika Mallory is, history is going to be very kind to her, very kind to her because history is never kind to people like that in, in real time. Cause you know, they, they villainize us. That's what they do. They villainize us. You know, they, 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 they changed the narrative about us and put out these false narratives about us. And, you know, people don't even get to know folks. You know, they just have an opinion based off something they heard. And I see it. You know what I'm saying? I see what she's out here doing for us. I see how she's literally putting her life on the line. Her and Linda Sawsaw and my guy, my son, salute to Carmen Perez. Salute to the whole Intel Freedom. Like, like Tamika's always where the action is. Not because she wants attention. You know what I mean? Not because she's trying to get celebrity, not because she's trying to get money, but because she actually truly cares about black people. There's, it's, it's, it's very rare. Tamika is not on 10 
because it's some shit that's happening in the black community. It's actually refreshing when I see Tamika take a break off just to laugh. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's actually refreshing when I take me and me and Tamika just having conversations about some other shit because she deserves that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we we, we really got to guard our mental health out here. And we really got to guard our, our, our spiritual energy and our emotional well-being, man. And, you know, it's got to be balanced, right? That's why I love when she says, she says on T.I.'s album, because she's on T.I.'s album, she says, um, she, she's she's Cardi B, Angela Davis, with some Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 on to, you can find her on Street Politicians every Wednesday with Prime. Yes. I I was I, I was definitely getting to that, you know. <laughs> but, but no, go out there and pre-order State of Emergency, Tamika Mallory's upcoming book. It'll be out May 11th, 2021. And basically her book is 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 a blueprint. You know what I'm saying? Because the only thing that's changed about this country is the administration. Black people, we are always in a constant state of emergency. You know what I mean? So uh she's just giving you a blueprint on how to navigate through this country full of vultures. That's all. And how we can, you know, truly liberate ourselves. Uh, and as T- Taylor just said, Street Politicians Podcast, that's also available on the Black Effect uh, iHeartRadio Podcast Network. It's available wherever you buy, wherever you listen to podcasts. I don't know why I keep saying buy. It's available wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, Tamika Mallory and my son, they have, they have Street they Politicians. They talk about like, different um, stuff too, not just politics. Not just yeah. not just politics. They just like th- this week. Uh, they they're talking about you know is, is social media friend yeah. to foe. It's really good. You know what I mean? It's a it's a really good conversation. I think you should check it out. I I, I was listening to the episode with Karen Civil as well. Um, I think that's about social media no, too, right? Same episode. Sure? It's the same episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Karen Karen Civil was on this episode. I'm gonna tell you who's got a great episode this week too, man. Ebony K Williams with Holding Court. Her and Dustin. Man, I learned so fucking much last night listening to Holding Court. Um. They got Faze on Love on there talking about Erasure because he got took it took, took off the cover of this movie once it went worldwide. They got David Johns on there talking about the situation that happened with Laverne Cox. So it's just a good conversation, man. I learned so much when I listened to Holding Court. So, yo, just go. And I help you huh? with both of this. Okay. See, Taylor? <laughs> see? Black Effect producer out here getting that, getting that money, <laughs> doing her thing, having a real sense of responsibility. Okay, but yeah, go to the iHeartRadio app, type in Black Effect and, um, you know, all the different podcasts will come up. Teslin Figueroa, Great Shot, No Chaser. You know, Teslin is, 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 is super dope. She's got a great episode. Oh, no, no, no. Not, uh, oh, never mind. I spoke too soon then. Okay. <laughs> never mind. But I, is, is it me? Is, am I on this week? Uh, you were on last week. Last week. I was on an episode last week. I got to go. I don't know what, what Teslin did this week, but, but go check it out. And listen, and all the smoke, all the smoke, they're in Dece- ending December with a bang. Salute to my guy, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Uh, they got Paul George on next week talking about the whole situation with the Los Angeles Clippers. And, you know, basically without saying it, Paul George is saying, we ran Doc Rivers the fuck up out of here. Okay? We got Doc, we got Doc Rivers fired, but he's in Philly now. So, you know, God has a plan for everybody. But just go check out the Black Effect Podcast Network. And I really got to thank y'all, man, because um, I was looking at the numbers. Black Effect Podcast Network, I think we launched in late September. I don't remember the exact date, but I know it was late September. Um, well, the first podcast we put out was cut to it by Steve Smith. And then October is when we really, you know, started releasing more. I really thank y'all and really, really appreciate y'all for y'all support, man. And, you know, I just want to create more platforms for, you know, more black people to have voices and tell their stories. Oh, because I'm getting all lot much this week too. Oh, shit. Thank you, Dwayne. Zori Hall, Hot Happy Mess podcast. That launched this week as well. Um, Zori is the homie. That's, that's, that's one of my loved ones. You know, Zori, I don't know if people know this, but Zori, when I started Uncommon mm-hmm. Sense on MTV2, Zori was my original co-host. That's why, that's why I picked to be my original co-host. So, like, the original cast of Uncommon Sense was, you know, Zori Hall, um, Jesus and Mero. Those were my go-tos, you know, every week. Like, that's who was on the show with me every week. And me and Zori actually shot the pilot of Uncommon Sense together. And then Zori uh, was on the first episode, but then she got snatched up by E, you know? So her MTV2 deal was up because that's, that's when I, when I, when I, when I, um, I was already at MTV2 
But, you know, they grabbed Jesus and Mero and then they grabbed Zori and they weren't using them, you know? They knew that they were talented and they had them there and, like, Jesus and Mero was writing and, you know, Zori would, you know, do hosting things on MTV and MTV too, but they weren't using them. And then I came with the Uncommon Sense platform and, you know, I had Jesus and Mero doing Classic of Trash every week and, and Zori Hall was, was my original co-host. So I've always saw Zuri. I've always had a, a, a love for Zuri because she's really dope. She's really talented and it, it was great to see her go to E and be super successful and I think she's hosting, what's, what's that show she hosts on NBC now? Um, I don't know. Is it, uh, what is that show? I don't know why the fuck I keep thinking Ninja Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yes, American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, Ninja Warrior. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she was on, she's on Access Hollywood on NBC. Like Zori, Zori doing her thing, but her podcast, Hot Happy Mess, is um available right now on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. So what, like I said, go to the iHeartRadio app, type in Black Effect. All the podcasts that we got um are up there. And we got a lot more to launch. Jeezy Recession Podcast is out right now. I can't even run them all down. Oh, Gangster Chronicles. Yeah, it's a lot. We're listen. We're doing well. And thank you. thank you to the people who've, who've already downloaded and subscribed to the various podcasts on the Black Effect iHeartRadio Podcast Network. We appreciate y'all. Now, let's get to some, let's do some asking idiots. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the show because I get to answer y'all questions. Taylor was trying to set me up to actually have people zoom in and ask me questions live. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> right? Hell no. Not doing that shit. Okay. Only when the live show happens. Live event. When that happens. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, well, speaking of uh, your church announcements, uh, Miss Burner Act wants to know why, what, I think she meant to say what, what makes a great black influencer? Authenticity. Authenticity is what makes a great black influencer. And the reason authenticity makes a great black influencer is because that person has probably become an influencer because they're authentic. You know, people see something in them that they can relate to. They see something in them that they see in themselves. You know, that influencer speaks to them in, in, in a way that connects. So when you're an influencer, you know, that, that, that authenticity, that you being you, you know what I'm saying? That you being the best version of yourself, that you being a one-on-one, they're hearing something from you that they don't hear other places. And that's where that connection comes, right? So to me, that's what makes a great Black influencer or any influencer, not even just Black, just authenticity. Like it's something about that person that you see that's just authentic. You know what I mean? And it don't even have to be for the people who, you know, give their opinions, their cultural critics like me. That can be the person you see on YouTube that's cooking. Mm. You might buy into the way they cook and buy into their recipes just because they in, they look like they having a ball. <laughs> they look like they really enjoy what they do. They authentically love what they do. And I think um, that's infectious. And I think that's what makes a great black influencer. That's a great question, by the way. Um, also, did you know that you had a TikTok? I don't someone, know. someone made a TikTok for you then. And then he's like, I guess all your dances, I don't know. <laughs> That's what someone's saying. No, it wasn't. I don't have a TikTok. No, there's nobody that enjoys my dancing more than you. That's, That's you. I really enjoy it. What's the name? What's the name of the TikTok? Know. I should just roll off. Her. You're lying. She's so TikTok. good. I, 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 I knew it. I thought it was, going, it was about to roll off your tongue so easily. It's probably something out. stupid like, it's probably some dumb shit like Thick Thick 78 <laughs> or some dumb shit. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, I bet you that's what you put. Thick, thick seventy eight. Look, so uh, C Botch two forty six wants to know: Do you think it's better for your mental health to keep up with the news every day or live in your own bubble? Wow, great fucking question, man. That's a great it's question. Like Lil Wayne, he supposedly lives in his own bubble. You know what I mean, and. He seems happy. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I always ask myself, living in a bubble, and, and Lil Wayne is a great example because he's 
always seems oblivious to everything that's going on around him. That's that's not knowing. Not knowing is like can, can be considered ignorance, right? But not 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 because you don't know, but just you know, I mean, no, because you don't know. You can say, okay, you're ignorant to the matter. If we we always look at ignorant as a a super negative word, but it's not. It's just a word. It's just a word that means like you don't know. As a matter of fact, what's, what's the what's the let me look up the definition. Of ignorant, ignorant definition. Yes, lacking lacking knowledge or awareness in general. Uneducated or unsophisticated. Okay, ignorant might be too strong of a word. Um, <laughs> all I'm saying, I, I, I'm, I'm basically trying to say all that to say if ignorance is bliss, why aren't more people happy? So I can't sit here and act like isolation, being in a bubble, is good for you. Because even in the 48 Laws of Power, it talks about how isolation is dangerous because, you know, you can cut yourself off so much that you're not even aware of... Um, Things that may be against you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to have your ear in the mix just enough to know what the fuck is going on because you got to know what's against you so you can thwart some of these attacks, right? Mm -hmm. So what's better for your mental health? Watching the news or living in a bubble? I think, I think, I think being aware be aware, don't react. Yes. Be aware of everything. Choose me. <laughs> but it but it but acknowledge yeah. nothing. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that's what, what Taylor said is very true. You know, like what, what what drives us crazy is the reaction. Like if you could just scroll through social media and never reply to anything you see on social media, it'd be fine. Mm -hmm. The mental health aspect is the part where these things trigger you. Things that are said about you are things that you see. Like, you know, just scrolling through and you see somebody getting shot by the police or you see somebody... I saw today, uh, Tamika actually sent me this. She sent me a video of some cops in the Bronx planting something on a, on a kid while they were searching them. And the kid is sitting there talking shit like, I ain't got nothing, yada, 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 this and that. And the cop is like, yes, the fuck you do. <laughs> Because we already put it on you. You know what I mean? So it's like stuff like that because that's the type of things that get into your brain, they get into your mind and you constantly think that those things can happen to you. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, but I think being aware and, 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 and being able to acknowledge a lot of these things and unpack some of these things is good. You know, I don't, I don't think that your mental health, like I, I tell people all the time, when I, when I go to therapy, I'm going to therapy because I'm trying to organize all the shit that's in my mind. That's why I always use the closet analogy. I always talk about how junky the fucking closet is and you walk in the closet and you know, you're, you're folding stuff up that you want to keep and organizing things you want to keep nice and neat and, you know, putting them away and the things you don't want, you're putting in a box and you're shipping off and now you got room to bring new things in. Like, that can only happen with awareness. Awareness and acknowledgement, you know? So I don't think you know, hiding from your problems makes them go away. Um, I don't think putting yourself in a bubble is going to make any of these things go away. I just think it's going to make it harder to deal with when you finally do pop up and, and, and get a dose of what's going on in the world. So for your mental health, I think it's better to be aware and acknowledge, you know, what's going on. And, by, and what's the point of therapy if you don't know nothing? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're going to therapy to unpack all your trauma and things that happen with you. You're going to therapy to unpack all of these things that you're seeing and, you know, experiencing. Like you have to have experiences in order to get um to get on get on the right track with your mental health. So I think um I think watching the news. I don't think it's anything wrong with being aware yeah, so of, of, of what's I was gonna going say on. too, it's the difference between watching the news maybe, maybe than social media. Cause you mentioned social media, so maybe we just need to delete social media and then. I mean, I think it's all the same because the news is showing you a lot of these things that are already on social media. Actually, a lot of the news is reacting to social media now. You know what I'm saying? They're reacting to things that happen on Twitter. They're reacting to things that happen on Instagram. I mean, shit. The president just spent four years on motherfucking yeah. Twitter. You know what I mean? Like, so you know, social media is the news nowadays. So when you even say news. I'm thinking about social media and I'm thinking about watching TV. But I think the key is, you know, like I said, awareness, being aware, 
acknowledging, but also you got to know when to pull back. Mm-hmm. You got to know when to turn shit off. You know, you got to know when enough is enough. Like you, you don't have to torture yourself. You don't have to traumatize yourself. You don't have to punish yourself. That you don't have to do. You know, that's that's really what being mentally healthy is. Being mentally healthy is knowing when to unplug. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's just the thing. I don't think none of us know how to unplug. Okay. And what else? Um, Hayes Days Podcast wants to know what advice you have for upcoming podcasters. Ah, then <laughs> same thing. I same thing I said for the black influence. Yeah, but they have to be like interesting because I think anyone now thinks that they could just hop on and just talk right like it has to be some type of you're right but what's more interesting than somebody's authentic story like here's the thing you can't listen to brilliant idiots and say I'm gonna do what Charlemagne and Andrew do you can't listen to drink champs and say I'm gonna do what Nori and DJ F and do. you can't listen listen to Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson all the smokers say I'm gonna do what mm-hmm. they do you know why all of these different podcasts are successful Cause they're all doing them. Yeah. God put you on this motherfucking planet and put you through a set of circumstances and experiences for you to have a story. I always tell these people that want to be podcasters, radio hosts, tell your story. Someone's going to rip. Don't make me quote Dr. Seuss on you. <laughs> fuck niggas. Hold on. Let me, you know what? Hold on. Let me quote Dr. Seuss. On you, <laughs> you just have. Hold on. Hold on, man. Let me quote Dr. Seuss. Children's book. Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is your (laughs) Dr. Motherfucking Seuss. That is my advice to you. Um, What's his name? Hayes Day's podcast. (laughs) Today, you are you. That is truer than true. There is no one alive who is your than you. I promise you, if you pull up as your true, authentic self and you're interested and you got a story to motherfucking tell, people will gravitate towards you. I don't know why. I will repeat it again. Stop trying to be a second rate version of somebody else. You can be a first rate version of your motherfucking self. Authenticity, man. I'm telling you. Every, I guarantee you, any podcast you think of, any personality you love, they are so unique. Mm-hmm. They have something that nobody else has. And that's why it's so much for everybody because there's always somebody that you can relate to. It's 340 million motherfuckers in this country who knows how many across the whole world. Everybody can have an audience. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Okay. What um, else? What, uh, by Shah Mark underscore A, what do you think is the biggest secret being held from mankind? Um, probably, probably. I knew you were going to say that. So someone also asked too, if there's going to be a podcast about aliens and all that on black effect. It would be dope. It would be hella dope to have a, a, a podcast about aliens on black effect. Um, I would want to talk to somebody who's like done some real extensive research. Like, I mean, actually I, I, like one of those UFO hunters, like who goes out there and like studies things like Roswell and, you know, Area 51 and all of that shit like that, who's actually had experiences and encounters. You know, I saw Barack Obama on Stephen Colbert and Stephen Colbert asked him about UFOs and Barack was like, I can't tell you. What? Okay. That right there told me, all, that, that told me everything I needed to know. Well, by the way, I've been on the Hill, man, and I, and that, that video that came out with a, with, a, with, a, with a pilot jet was watching that shit shoot by and the pilots were like, yo, what the fuck is that? Yada, yada, yada. When I was on the hill and my guy, I'm not going to say who my guy is. When I was asking about UFOs, he was like, come talk to this person. The only reason the guy told me anything is because the guy was leaving. He was retiring. Um, uh, Yeah, he was retiring. And so he's like, I'm only telling you this because I'm retiring. He was like, if I wasn't retiring, then you know, I might have to kill you. <laughs> and I started laughing. He was like, no, I'm serious. And I, I, to this day, I don't know if he was serious or not. But he said, there's a video on YouTube that you can go look up. It was classified information, but it's going to come out in a minute. And we're going to verify it that, yes, that what you saw in that video was an unidentified flying object. And I really think they're priming us. I think they're priming us to have this conversation about, you know, no, not conversation. They're priming us for the arrival mm-hmm. to let yeah. us know, yes, there's other life forms out here that exist. And you'd be a fool to think they don't. Yeah. 
And America, the world needs this humbling, especially America. What would you do if you seen one, like, face to face? I have already. Face to face? I was laying in my bed. Um, I don't remember how old I was, but I was laying in my bed. And if you've ever seen the movie Signs, this is why I be thinking that a lot of these movies and shit. They have to be you know, to something. These movies. These movies are always based on yeah. the truth because that alien that was in Signs was standing over me just like how he was standing over motherfuckers in that movie. Remember when he was standing over Belle Gibson's daughter and he was like sucking the air out of her? I was laying down and I woke up and I had the feeling like the hag was riding me and it looked just like the thing from Signs except for it was purple and black. And as the sun started to rise... It started to fade away. For real? I always say that I'm an alien, but, you know. Nah, you just short. <laughs> you short, but you move tall, Taylor. <laughs> and I've seen a flying saucer before. I saw a flying saucer when I was eight years old, standing in my grandmother's yard, playing. I always think Turned of around. when you and Shows, we had that conversation before, and you was like, look, it might just be aliens coming, like, saying, like, what if, they, what if we rented uh, Earth and they... Earth is on a lease. <laughs> I always think about that. Earth is on a lease. And they back like, y'all fucking this shit up. Y'all fucking this shit up, man. We got to get, get these tenants to fuck up out of here. These, these, y'all fucking up this beautiful ass place. It's all of this water used to be blue. When we left this fucking earth to you fucking humans, this whole shit was blue. Okay? We, we, we left you with everything that you needed. Right? This land, we left you with all the medicine. You could just be living naturally, holistic. We left you with everything y'all fucking needed and y'all ruined it. Tearing all these goddamn beautiful trees down to fucking build Starbucks. What the fuck is a Starbucks? <laughs> get the get these dirty ass humans out of my motherfucking property now. That's what I truly believe. I really believe Earth is on the lease and humans have fucked it up and now the aliens are coming back. And they're going to tell us we could do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> okay. Straight up. <sighs> All right. Um, you want one more? Yeah, give me one more. Um, and we get up out of here. I guess. Damn, that was it. Um, no. Okay. Will the popula- uh, 912 underscore idiot, will the population of the United States ever come together as one without the influence of an outside threat? <laughs> no. Not until you, not in, and, and, and even when the aliens come, it's not going to bring people together. Social media in the last four years have showed me motherfuckers don't really want unity and group operation. That whole, you know, there's only one race, the human race, that is complete bullshit human beings are tribal I creatures too, and when they, because why would we when we all look the same in a way like a little more similar not different colors and all that shit huh? i just feel like you're saying that there's no not gonna be any unity i don't think there was ever supposed to be really i think we're supposed to the reason why there's different races and everything else we're supposed to try to understand the other side but i think there's always going to be that it's yeah. impossible. And by the way, you can have all of that, all of that variety, right? But human beings are just wired to be yeah. tribal. We have our set of beliefs and we believe what we believe. And if the other side don't believe it, it's fucked. That- and there's, there's no nuance anymore. There's no gray areas whatsoever. Nobody is even trying to see where the other side is coming from. You use certain buzzwords you know, you stand with certain people, you say certain things, you get fucking labeled and they put you over here. And then this little group goes over here. Black people aren't monolithic. White people aren't monolithic. Italians aren't monolithic. Jewish people aren't monolithic. None of these people are monolithic. It just seems like that to us because we're on the outside looking in. And a lot of these communities and these groups have a lot more organization than we actually do. But there's nobody on this planet that's monolithic. Everybody is fucking tribal. So no, I don't think people will ever come together as one on this fucking planet, even when the UFOs come. You know, that reminded me, it reminds me of, do you know what Fairly Odd Parents are? I heard about it. It was an old Nickelodeon show. show. And I remember they had an episode and Timmy wished for everyone to look the same and they still found something different. Everyone was exactly the same but they still found something to be different. And that show taught me that what you just said, that 
it's always going to be an issue with something. Oh, well, guess what? <laughs> this, is, this is a fairly odd There plant. you go. <laughs> All right. And and he, and you know who makes the, this this planet odd? Humans. Mm-hmm. Humans are the mutants, the virus. Where the where the COVID nineteen of Earth? We've been fucking this shit up from day one. And there's this thing, man. I wish I knew how to pronounce it. This is one of them times where I knew how. I wish I knew how to pronounce it. <laughs> I'm gonna spell it for y'all. Cause I want y'all to look it up. I was just watching a video about this, and then my girl Debbie Brown. Salute to Debbie Brown. You can check out the Drop and Gems podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network as well. Um, Gaia. I think, it's, I think that's how you pronounce it. G-A-I-A. And you ask, what is Gaia? Gaia is looking at the earth as a god or energetic being, which it is. It's the divine container for this human experiment. For humanity to rise, we have to be of service to and protect Earth. We have failed at that. Yeah. We failed at that. We have failed at serving and protecting the Earth. We take, 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 take from this planet. Take, take all its resources. Fucking just take, 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 take. And we don't put anything back. Yeah. We build fucking Starbucks. <laughs> but you know, you know, not to uh, keep going on, but like my boyfriend, he's very into history. And he always goes back to like, they didn't have to use that back in the day. Like, so why do we have to? He doesn't trust like this. Greed, yeah. capitalism, mm-hmm. the love of fucking money. That's that's all this shit mm-hmm. is. We don't give back to the earth. The earth gives us everything we fucking need. Convenience. Yeah. Literally. Convenience. Yeah. That's all. That's, that's what motherfuckers want. Instead of just being mm-hmm. patient. That's why we, we've had these conversations on the podcast before. I talk about when you go to certain countries, whenever I go to Anguilla, if they don't got it, they don't got it. When the last time you've heard in America something not being in season? There used to be a time where you're like, no, that's not in season. Now everything is in season all the fucking time. We don't give a fuck about Earth. And guess what? Earth don't give a fuck about <laughs> us. But I guarantee you one thing. If Earth and humans go to war, guess who's going to win? The Earth always corrects itself. Yeah, exactly. Remember those exactly. things called? Remember those things called mm-hmm. dinosaurs? Yeah, it's going to be another species down the line. Remember them shit called humans? <laughs> you think humans? You think humans really existed? <laughs> They're going to be. It's going to be a museum. We're going to walk into the museum and going to see a four foot tall <laughs> skeleton <laughs> with wide hips. Well, it's it's say, you have the caveman already, say, so yeah. It's going to say Taylor from <laughs> Philly. That's what the fuck it's going to be. They're going to be like, yo, you really think this was real? Motherfuckers going to be in there arguing about, nah, this shit ain't real. Ain't no, humans used to walk? Motherfuckers had two legs, two arms watches. So I guarantee be, you. So it's going to be animals again, you think? I don't know what it's going to be. I really don't. We don't know what the next iteration of Earth's, you know, divine creation is going to be. We have no idea. But it's 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 going to be something. That I can promise you. All right. <laughs> Time to go. Um, Andrew said he'll be back next week. I hope he is. Um, thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dwayne. As always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. <laughs>